So we've been looking at a lot at geographic maps, and geographic maps are based on GeoPandas, which extends um, regular pandas, right? So a GeoPandas data frame is a subclass of a regular data frame. A GeoPandas series is a subclass of a regular series. And, um, and so here I have an example of a GeoPandas data frame, and, uh, and you can see it right here. And we've talked a little bit about this before, but inside of this, I have <coughs> um, this geometry column. And if I want to pull one of those items out, I could go to, say, um, you know, I have row, column here. I could go in the first row and uh, in the last column, and I could pull out that piece. And, and I could draw in other rows, too, and see the different parts of the city. And then, well, there's most of Madison. And, um, and so what I want to do here is talk a little bit more about these objects. These are what we call shapely objects. GeoPandas is based on uh, the shapely package. And uh, shapely is going to let us do a lot of interesting things. If we have two lines, we can figure out where they intersect. If we have two polygons, we can figure out uh, what area of them uh, overlaps. Um, you could totally imagine maybe I want to figure out... Um, you know, what districts in the city overlap with what uh, school districts. That's a lot of kind of uh, political reasons you might want to imagine um, exploring these shapes. Um, and, uh, and and so to kind of do this, I may be working not with maps, but with a simpler case where I just want to create a visualization that looks like this. It's a simple little Venn diagram uh, with categories A and B. And it's showing me how many categories are in each section, right? So I can see there's one thing at the, that's at the intersection of A and B. And uh, the color of these um, areas uh, also matches, well, the quantity. And so the general strategy I'm going to do to build this is I'm going to create two shapely circles. And, uh, and those are both polygons, it turns out. And I can take these two circles and find the intersection of them. And then I can independently create a shape that's an intersection and set that color independently um, of the rest, right? So it's kind of a little bit of a toy example, but it's going to be useful if you later want to kind of do some computation dealing with geographic regions that might sometimes be uh, actually quite messy, right? When I'm looking at something like this, I may want to help, have some help if I'm looking at um, uh, kind of how this interacts with uh, other shapes. So the first thing I'm going to do here is um, import my uh, my shapely shapes and uh, those are in a package called uh, shapely. So I'm going to say uh, from shapely uh, import uh, polygon. We've seen polygon before. Another one is point. Kind of surprisingly, they don't have a, a, a circle, and I'm going to be kind of explaining why. Um, so let me start with this. I'm going to create a point, and uh, when I create a point, I guess I should actually run this. Uh, from shapely.geometry, import these things. Uh, when I'm creating a point, uh, I need to pass in um, some coordinates for it, right? And, and, and at the minimum, I need to have an X and Y. You could also imagine passing in a Z. And so I'm gonna say, I'm gonna have one, one, and, uh, and sure enough, that looks like a nice little point right there. Um, as I mentioned, there's not a separate circle. And uh, that's because I can uh, create a circle by making a border around a point. And so I can create this area around it, which I might call a, a buffer like this. And I can specify, well, how large do I want that buffer? And, and there I have a nice little circle. And if I take a peek at the type of this, um, <clears throat> you can see that's actually showing up as a polygon. The reason is that it's just easier to uh, deal with things like um, kind of the intersection of two shapes if everything is a polygon. And uh, how do we do a circle? Well, we just have an approximation of a circle where we have a polygon with a bunch of very tiny um, sides. That's just how Shapely uh, does things. Now, uh, to work towards my ultimate goal of making the Venn diagram, I need to somehow get these on, on a matplotlib area. And uh, so you can see I've already created PLT up here. And so I could do this. I could say something like fig ax equals that dot subplots. And, uh, and you can see what's happening right now is it's drawing both of these separately. Um, what I'd really like to do is I'd like to draw this circle on top of this area down here, right? That's my goal. And um, so how can I do that? Well, we've seen before that we can have, um, if I have like some sort of plotting region like AX, I can do something like um, add a patch or uh, 
or maybe more generally, I could add artist and then I could add something here. And, and so let me try and see if I get lucky in how I'm doing this. What if I just try to capture that point object there, then add this down here and run it, and, uh, and it's trying to complain. And uh, I guess Polygon has no attribute set figure. You know, actually when I've run this before, um, you know, it doesn't have Z order. Uh, I, I've gotten different errors before, but the, the gist of it is across different versions, you can't do that because uh, this is not an artist object um, as far as matplotlib is concerned. And in matplotlib, they have this artist class. And uh, and if you want to have shapes, you have to be descending from that. And, and so fortunately, there's another uh, package that I'm going to introduce. I'm kind of <laughs> introducing packages left and right here. Uh, but there's another one called Descartes that will actually let us tie um, tie this all together. And, uh, and, and Descartes integrates both with matplotlib and, uh, and Shapely. So I'm going to say from Descartes uh, import polygon patch. Okay, and what I can do down here is I can, when I'm creating this uh, circle, I can basically convert that to a polygon patch. So I can, I can draw like this. And uh, polygon patch can understand these underlying Shapely things. And, uh, and it also is an artist type. So maybe actually, let me just try to, uh, uh, maybe the better way for me to show that is to put this here, right? If I look at this and, um, and I have that thing and uh, I, I could look at this, I could look at the type of C, a poly, well, path patch. And, and then I could say method resolution order. And, uh, and you can see that this thing inherits from a matplotlib artist uh, and well it inherits from a patch which is a kind of artist right and that's why it's going to be happy if I want to draw it like this I can draw that circle on top of this area um, and, and of course it's huge because um, when I'm looking at this here I can see that it's centered at 1 1 and has a radius of 1 and uh, and that's actually well the area I have here so so maybe let me uh, try to set a different uh, x limit here I mean maybe say x limit equals zero to three and maybe y limit will be um, something like zero to two and uh, um, is it is it x limit um sorry i, I think uh maybe i'm i'm, I'm misremembering I, I i usually do that with uh pandas but i i think i can do something like this set x lim limit maybe let me try this Otherwise, if that doesn't work, I'll refer to my notes rather than uh, forcing you to uh, uh, watch me guess. Okay, so what do I do here? I'm sorry, so it's set x lim, and then I just pass in, not a tuple, but just my, my two values, right? So I'm gonna do that. And, uh, oh, well, that's kind of funny. It, uh, oh, yep, sorry. Wow, how, how can I make it so hard? I, I could do that, and then I can also do uh, ax dot set y lim, and I can do uh, that as well. If I if I do that, okay, finally I actually have a decent um, circle, and uh, and so that's great, right? So this is progress towards my Venn diagram, and um, if I want to, I can draw two circles, right? So I can have a circle there. Um, let's get another one. Uh, maybe I'll shift this one over instead of having um, x1 and y1, I'll have x2 and y1. And, uh, and then I'll add this down here, add artist, c2, and great, I have that other circle on, on top of it. And, and you can kind of see if I set an alpha here to um, uh, be something like that. Uh, actually, wrong place to have an alpha. Uh, I think... Um, uh, where would I set the alpha here? Let me just check my notes. Is there not, not an alpha? It must be up here where I create this one. Can I do that? Alpha equals 0 0.5. Great, okay, and I can try to see both of them. Uh, but that's not quite what I want to do. I ultimately want to have um, three different shapes for my Venn diagram that I can independently draw on, okay? And, uh, and so maybe what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna start calling them um, A, B. And so I have those two, A, B. And, um, and then I wanna have the centerpiece, which I'm gonna call A, B. And uh, A, B is gonna be the intersection of these two 
two pieces. So if I actually just comment all this out for a moment, um, there are all these nice um, uh, functions, like I can have the intersection between uh, A and B, right? And you can see, actually, um, I kind of goofed this up a little bit here. Uh, I can only do intersection before I've gone to polygon path, right? So I have to be a little careful here. Let me let me do that. I can do that. I can hit the the intersection there. I could also get the difference if I wanted to. So that's the stuff in A that's not in B. I could get the stuff in B that is not in A. Um, kind of these moon shapes. And so when I want the A B area, that's going to be the intersection piece, right? So I'm going to do that like so. And uh, and then I think what I want to do is I want to clean up A and B here, right? I want those to really be um, uh, separate, right? So I'm going to say A equals A dot difference B. I want to subtract that off. And from B equals B dot difference, I want to subtract off A, right? So let me actually, is, is that going to work? Um, not quite, right? Because uh, after I modify A, what am I left with with B? Let, let's take a peek at that. So I'm going to say that. What do I have there? I really have the whole circle. And the reason why is because, well, after I subtract off A, um, I, I just had that there. So, so maybe what I'm going to do is I'm going to actually have these two go back to how it was. I'm just going to have my original circles. And here I'm going to say, well, I have that region, which is the intersection of the two circles. And then A can be one circle minus the other, and vice versa, right? I guess I was kind of um, trying to optimize on the fly and, and kind of making it worse. Um, okay, so I'm going to do that. That's a good piece. That's a good piece. And then I do that, and I have both pieces. And then I can also add my AB piece in the middle, right? So I'm going to have AB right here, and that's looking pretty good. And... Um, and, and maybe I want to just get rid of that border, so I'm going to say plt.axis off, like that, and I have these two nice circles, and I can uh, kind of do the next step of actually trying to convert them into um, uh, a Venn diagram. Um, so maybe the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to set some color for each of them, um, just so that uh, uh, I, I can see them a little bit more easily, right? Because I may want to put some text on top of it so what I'm going to do is I'm going to say um, when I create this polygon patch, I can actually change the color. So I can say, like, well, what is the face color? You know, there's the border color, which is the line around, and the face color is on top of it. So I can say that's like, you know, something like 0 0.7. I can change that one. I can change all of them. And so I'm going to do that. And uh, that's all good. And uh, then I want to be able to actually draw the numbers on top of there. Well, what are the quantities I'm, I'm dealing with? And so I have to, for my Venn diagram, I have to have some sort of quantity. So I may have quantity A equals, I don't know, two, quantity AB equals three, quantity B equals four, something like that. And I want to draw those on top of each of these areas. So one of the things I'm going to do is I want to figure out how I can loop over all of my areas and my numbers and uh, and then add them as appropriate. So so instead of having all of this, I want to figure out how I can put that in a loop because I may have to have, do, have a lot of similar code for each case. So I could say something like this. I could say something like for area in, and I could have a list here, right? I mean, I could have um, A, B, A, B. I can add those. Well, maybe, maybe yeah, I'm going to add them like this. Let me add that uh, area. Is this the same thing so far? Let me just try to test this before I go too much farther. That looks good. And um, then what I really want to do is I want to kind of loop over these numbers um, in lockstep with these areas. And, and so one of the ways I can do that is instead of having these three entries in the list, I could have three tuples. And so I could say like quantity A and then region A, quantity B and region B, and then uh, quantity A, B, and region A, B. And, and when I do that here, I make it a tuple here. And um, if I wanted to, then I could go inside and maybe if I wanted to, I could get like T0 or T1. Um, I can automatically pack, unpack T0 and T1 right here if I want by just saying I have my quantity and my area. 
then I'm going to be getting both of those. So maybe I'm just going to print the uh, print the quantities here, and then add the add the areas. And that's not how I spell that. Uh, QA QAX. How did I get that? Okay, so I'm getting those. I want to draw this text on top of uh, on top of the shapes. And um, and so. Remember that when I want to draw the text on top of a shape, I, I, I can do this. I can say a dot text, and here I can say, well, I have my x position, my y position, and then I actually have have the text, right? And um, and so the text, I know what I want that to be. It's well, whatever the quantity is. Um, the x and y are going to be a little bit trickier. Um, one of the things that's going to help me is that whenever I have um, one of these shapely shapes, it has a centroid, right? So I could say area dot um, centroid like that and I can see well I have all of these points here and um, and that's trying to help me figure out well, what my x and y are right because I can say centroid.x or centroid.y and um, and so if I want to draw the numbers kind of on the geographic um, centroid of these I can just paste this up here right I'm going to say I want to get the the x and the y just like so I may do that and, and you can see I get these nice numbers on top of it. Maybe I should make those a little bit larger. I can say size equals size equals 16, something like that, right? So that's pretty good. I'm getting the numbers on top of my Venn diagram. Well, while I'm on, and I'm kind of on the roll with some text, let me add some, um, uh, some uh, text on the top of here too so I can see that my two circles are A and B. So I'm just going to do... Um, up here, I'm going to say, actually, let, let's just, yeah, I'll do that right here, ax.text, and uh, I know where my circles are, right? I know that I um, had the first one at, that was like the center of it, so one, two would be the top of it, uh, that's an A, it, really kind of tiny, right? Um, let me make that much larger, I'm going to say size equals 20, and, uh, and to actually make it look nice, I, I can worry about the the vertical alignment, which I want to be, not the top, top would look bad, right? I want it to be aligned with the bottom. And then uh, in terms of horizontal alignment, I want it to be centered, not left aligned. So now I get A kind of nicely on the top of that. I, I, I could actually make that quite a bit larger, couldn't I? And, uh, and the same deal, same deal for the other ones. That one's going to be a B. And, uh, and I, if I remember that circle, the circle two, right here this is circle two is at position two so i guess i'm going to start at position two here and so i have this nice venn diagram where i have the numbers and uh, i think i have all the text that i want to really add here um the other thing i want to put uh into this is i want the shading to be based on um the quantity basically i want a bigger number to look darker right so this uh this area over here in region four should be darker than say the region uh, uh, in area two. And um, and so what I think I'll do is I'll base it, um, I'll get some sort of like percentage here. I may say like, you know, what is the percentage of max? You know, just to abbreviate that percentage is maybe uh, the quantity divided by, well, I guess what, what the ever the largest max is. So, so maybe up here, I'm just trying to create like a quantity max. It's gonna be the max of these three things quantity B and quantity AB. All right, so I'm going to do that. That's my quantity AB. And, uh, and now uh, this is actually more nice because this percentage is going to be a number between 0 and 1, and I can use numbers between 0 and 1 as a color. So I'm going to do that. I'm just going to say, well, let's convert that percentage to, um, uh, to that. And, and what is it unhappy about? Invalid string grayscale is 1.33 how did I how did I get something that was bigger than any of these because I divided by this instead of the maximum okay great let me actually divide by the maximum so I'm actually between 0 and 1 and uh, and I see that well it, it's kind of the opposite of what I want to do right um, one means the brightest right so that's why it's white over here Really, when I have more quantity in that area, I'd like that to be darker. And, um, and so maybe what I could do is I could do something like this. I could just say like, you know, one minus all of that. And, uh, and that looks pretty good, right? I mean, the color is right. 
um, but but it's kind of saturating at uh, uh, it, it, it's saturating too soon, right? I, I want the darkest color to be like a gray instead of uh, instead of a black. So so maybe what I will do is I'll have this, and um, I want to multiply it by something to kind of rescale it. So so I do kind of like you know times zero point six, and now my color here is going to be between zero and. 0.6, which I guess is still not quite what I want because, um, you know, originally I had this spectrum from uh, from black to white, and, uh, and and by multiplying this by 0.6, now I'm getting from black to gray, and really what I wanted was gray to white. So I'm going to actually add something here, and so since this was 0 to 6, this is 0.4 to 1, so it'll be 0.4 gray to 1 white, right? So I'm going to do that. <coughs> And now I actually get kind of these nice colors, right? I can see that the darker areas uh, correspond to a larger portion of, of the Venn diagram. Okay, so I can try to think carefully about how I'm going to do that uh, that color scheme. Now, just to make this whole example complete, um, what I would really like to do is to think about not about you know me putting in these numbers exactly, but how would I do this if I actually had some sort of set, right? How would I get these numbers? And so let me create two sets. I'm going to say you have like an A set equals, you know, one, two, three. And then the B set should probably have some overlap. So I'll say it's like three, four, five, six, seven, eight. And, um, and how can I get these quantities, right? Um, the wrong thing to do for the quantity A would be to say length of A set because Quantity A means you're an A but not B, right? And so this should really be two, right? I don't want to count this number three that's in both of them. And uh, it's actually kind of cool. Just like um, with shapely shapes, we have this intersection and difference. The same thing works for Python sets. So, so I could actually do this, right? I mean, here's my A set. And I could say A set dot difference, B set. Right now I just get one, two. The stuff that's in A but is not in B. Um, in the same way, I can, you know, get the opposite of that. What is in B? That's not an A, right? I have that there. And then finally, I can say, well, uh, what is in, what is in both of them, right? Which should just be three. Okay, so down here, what do I want to do? I want to get the length of these three things, and uh, and so I'm going to work on that. I'm going to say that um, first stuff that's just an A is that. And then the stuff that's just in B is that. And then the stuff that's in both of them is the intersection. And maybe, you know, I was just trying to work there separately to keep it cleaner, but I'm just trying to end up with everything in one big cell. And I'm going to do that. And let's just try to think of it for a moment what we want this to look like. And, uh, and it's kind of actually not what I thought it's going to look like because when I was looking at this here, I'm like, huh, B should be the darkest, right? There's a bunch of stuff in B that's not in anything else. A should be the second darkest because there's two things there. And then I expected the, the lightest in the middle, which is not what it is at all. And uh, why is that? So the quantities are wrong. For one, if I run this, I have five in the intersection which is because I just mixed all of these up, right? Like I think that the intersection is the quantity AB, and then this one is the quantity B, right? The stuff that's just in B, and then 20A is the stuff that's just in A. Do I get that right? Okay, that actually looks correct, right? I can see that um, most of the stuff is B and B, so I have five there, and then that's also the darkest shape. So. This is a good uh, Venn diagram, and, and we are able to do this because we can try to deal with the custom shapes and, and reason through how to base the color based on the data uh, and do the, the um, intersections. Okay, so I'll leave it off there.